Hello, everybody. Welcome to our next in a series of community calls for Open Ed 20. Um, I am Spencer, and I am one of your co-hosts for today on September 18th, and I will let my co-host introduce herself. Hi, everybody. This is Amy Tan, and I'm just really happy to be connecting with all of you today, and welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. Looking forward to our session today. Um, and we are going to have a good time together. So happy Friday, let's get things started. So as a reminder, as we do um, for these community sessions, we like to reintroduce you to our fantastic steering committee. And so these are the members of the steering committee, but please know that we have several working groups um, and subcommittees that are contributing, contributing to Open Ed 20 um, as they say, teamwork makes the dream work. And there are many people behind this initiative, many people doing this work. So um, again, thank you to all these members and of course to our committees, uh, our other committees. Here's our agenda for the day. And um, you can see we're gonna just kind of give you some updates and also move through some questions to help sculpt and form the agenda for Open Ed 20. And then we'll get your thoughts via some breakout groups a little bit later on. And again, as we have been doing throughout these community calls, we're going to be using a tool called Menti. Um, so you can go to www.menti.com and use the code 16 one four seven three five. There's also a QR code on your screen currently that you can use to link up. Um, and just to set Menti up, a couple of quick notes. It may be best to use a separate browser or device. Um, you could use your phone or your tablet um, to follow along with the polling questions. Again, we will be sending some polling questions to get your perspectives on Open Ed and some of the suggestions that you all might have. Um, and I think that one of my wonderful committee, co-committee um, conspirators has posted um, the link that you need in the chat. So if you need that, the, the direct link is in the chat. Um, and again, at menti.com, you can use the code 16147835. So seeing some people pull that up, which is fantastic. We will be using that tool for a number of questions today, so make sure you get that set up and just take a second to do that now. Fantastic. Wow, we already have a response to our first Menti question, which is, where are you joining us from? You can enter your US state, your Canadian province, your country, or other locale. And now we're seeing these roll in some amazing cities and states and provinces. We're seeing some folks from all over the place, coast to coast, it looks like Rhode Island to Alaska. What time is it in Alaska? I don't know. <laughs> so go ahead and enter, getting some more, some friends from Florida, which is fantastic. BC, 9 a.m. in Alaska, 8 a.m. in Hawaii. Thank you for that update for our friends from the far west side of the hemisphere. 7 a.m. in Hawaii. Whew. Dedicated. <laughs> Thanks for joining us no matter what time zone you're in. We appreciate it. Hopefully you've had some breakfast or some coffee at the very least. All right, great. Thank you all for, for giving us a perspective where you're coming from. So our next question from Menti, how is the start of your semester going? And we've been using these fun little prompts to kind of um, get folks engaged and, and get your perspectives on the, uh, your emotions around the term. And most of us are in full swing of the term, if not kind of at the outset of the term. So go ahead and answer your your prompt, pick your favorite GIF or GIF. I really like the, uh, the coffee prompt. Okay, now we're seeing some responses. Nobody on sabbatical. 
but lots of folks saying keep moving like those corgis on the treadmill. Fantastic, I love it. And we have some upcoming sabbaticals, which is something I'm sure you're looking forward to, Jason. It's not really the term any of us expected, but we are here now. And so I'd like to see that people are moving forward. <laughs> Great. So now you're warmed up on Menti and you're good to go for our questions a little bit later on. Um, and we have some updates on the nuts and bolts, the planning process of Open Ed 20. And so I'm going to kick it over to Nicole for those updates. All right. Thank you very much, Spencer. Uh, update from the operations side of the conference. Just quickly, for those of you who are attending this maybe for the first time or, or haven't been following the conference closely, uh, our planning process is well underway. Uh, this year, we're organizing the conference through a new community-driven process uh, and have set the dates for November 9th through 13th, 2020. Uh, we have blown past the two-month mark and are now about seven weeks away from the conference. So uh, it's getting down to uh, sort of crunch time in, in terms of planning, but uh, we couldn't be more excited for uh, what is in store for the next, uh, for, for up to, uh, November 9th through 13th and excited that many of you are continuing to join these meetings and looking forward to the conference itself. So uh, the conference will be fully virtual. Uh, we will be opening registration. We are, we are right on the cusp. <laughs> Hopefully early next week, we'll get that out to you all. Uh, we announced it at our last meeting. We set the standard registration rate at, at 75 uh, US dollars uh, is the standard rate. Uh, that'll go up a little bit closer to the conference, but there'll also be some discounted rates for, for certain groups and uh, scholarship process intended to help uh, reduce cost as a barrier for attending the conference. You know, we really wanna leverage the fact that this is a virtual conference and, and so many more people can participate than, than ever before because it doesn't require travel or crossing a national border. Uh, and we really wanna make sure that, that um, as many people who can participate uh, can as, as possible without cost as a barrier. So we'll be getting that out next week. And, and just a quick note for people on the call, we've received a few inquiries from organizations that are interested in, in, in sort of bulk uh, bulk rates or bulk purchases, and you're welcome to write in to the, to the co uh, contact at openeducationconference.org for information about that if it's something you'd like to discuss. Okay, so with that, I am going to turn it over to Emily Reagan uh, real quick for a uh, update on the conference program. Yeah, we're super excited. We received 312 submissions. So thank you so much to everyone who has submitted to present at Open Ed 2020. And thank you to our 92 uh, reviewer volunteers that have joined us to help review all these incredible proposals, as well as the very hardworking members of the program team who are also participating in the review process. So we have over 100 volunteers contributing to reviewing uh, all of these proposals, and we're getting really excited about this conference. So um, we're right in the thick of it. We're going to get responses out to folks September 30th. Perfect. Thanks so much, Emily. So with that, uh, we are going to turn it over to Akinksha for an exciting update on the conference brand. Perfect. Hi, everyone. It's really awesome to see some friendly faces on the call or some friendly names on the call. Um, I'm really excited to be talking about our new logo. I'm kind of the person who really believes that a logo is more than just like an image, but it really like should embody the brand and the values of the organization or of the sort of thing that we're promoting. And in this case, it's the Open Education Conference. And so I just wanted to give a little bit of a background and sort of give a big shout out to the open education communications team who there's a couple members from the planning committee a couple of community members and they have been extremely hard at work looking at details whether it's the font type or the colors or small little details as to like if it should be centered or to the left and 
those things seem really, um, you know, tedious to begin with. But once you see the product, I think you'll be quite amazed. So a couple um, months ago, we sort of asked folks what they thought open education meant to them. And some words that came to mind were the words that we see here, sustainability, inclusivity, or inclusion, sorry, um, open to all, kindness, uh, equity, student-centered, collaboration. And we want to find a way to, you know, put this in a logo without having all these words, um, you know, written in something really quick. And I think that, you know, the more that we look at these words, there tends to be a theme. And the biggest theme that I really want to see is that we are a community regardless of where we are. I mean, obviously people are here at 7 a.m. Um, so shout out to those folks. But I really do think that the logo that we're about to show you is really incredible. So I will say, because I, I think that it's a way to keep everyone awake, but I will ask for a drum roll uh, from the committee and from the group, because I think that uh, it'll make it really exciting and we will launch our logo right away here. So drum rolls, please. I don't know how to do it over camera, but. Wait, hold on. <laughs> is that a drum set? <laughs> David, David, please play us a drum roll. All right, y'all. Drum roll is coming. Can you all see it? Yep. Yeah. Nice. All right. I love it. Are you ready? That's awesome. Yeah, we are ready. So, ta-da! Uh, welcome to the logo. And you can see it's also replicated in this incredible Zoom background. Uh, but the logo is right here. And it's, you know, as the description says, it's professional, sophisticated, but still approachable. And that was really key to this, is how do we take all of those words and all of this background and put it into something that, you know, reflects the community and really is something that is replicable but also something that's really memorable and what I love about it is that it's just so simple um yet with the story behind it it does tell a little bit of a history about you know how this community has come together and so the next slide just simple um the color schemes um it's a nice little scheme but the next slide talks about the font which is actually an open license font as well you can use it on google docs which is kind of the cool part so everything will look very aesthetically uh, put together, um, but it's also a really incredible way for us to be able to, again, put our values right inside the logo, not only in um, the way that it looks, but in the ability for it to be replicated. And so the next sort of last thing I'll say to you folks about the logo is now that we've launched it, you can go and follow our page on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram, um, because everything will be live there and you'll see um, the logo in its various iterations, whether it be on the black background, the white background, or this, one of my favorites, this rainbow gradient um, style background. And so I think that it would be really incredible. And you folks, if you take a follow on the pages, you'll be able to uh, keep up with what's happening and you'll be able to keep up with um, the conference. And the at for it is just at hey open ed. And I'll pass it over to Amy to continue us um, on the rest of this call. Thank you, Akanksha. Um, so now we really need some information from all of you on how to structure the virtual schedule on November 19th through the 13th. So we have a series, just a few questions um, for you to respond to, 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 to give us that information. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly, but I, I wanna allow people a chance to respond. So the first question, what kind of session are you most interested in attending or viewing virtually? We are proposing 55 minute interactive sessions, 55 minute panels, 25 minute presentations, and 10 minute lightning talk. So I'll give you just a minute to, to go ahead and, and respond. And as always, um, I believe the survey will be open after the call for a certain amount of time to allow anyone who couldn't attend to, to give us feedback. 
Excellent. Okay, I'm seeing lots of responses. So I'll move on to the next question. Which would you rather for the November 9th to 13th virtual schedule? Would you rather have sessions start and end at the same time every day, which would be more predictable? Or would you rather have sessions that are varied or extended times from day to day, which would create a more inclusive schedule? Um, and if you don't have an opinion, you can click on neutral there and that will tell us that we did, we are getting your feedback, but you really don't have a preference. I think you can probably hear my dog's feet clicking on the floor as you're making your selection. And we'll move on to the next slide. Which would you rather for the November 9th to 13th virtual schedule? Would you prefer shorter days with more sessions at the same time so that more people can participate at once? Or would you prefer longer days with fewer sessions happening at once so that you have more opportunities to attend different sessions, more opportunities to participate? And we also provided the neutral option. If you don't have a preference, please let us know. Again, these are really um, helpful for us when we're making de the decisions on how to structure the schedule. And we can move on to the next question. How are you planning to structure your attendance during the November 9th to 13th conference? Will you be attending the conference primary? Will that be your primary focus for the week? Or will you focus on the conference for some days and your regular schedule for others? Will you attend sessions when you can around your regular schedule? Or is it unknown or not applicable at this time? Okay. We really appreciate your responses and we can move on to the next question. Many sessions will be presentations that aren't interactive. For this type of session, how important is it to you to attend live? Do you strongly prefer to attend a live session? Do you strongly prefer to watch the recording? And, I, and this would be asynchronous, give you more flexibility, um, or are, would either session uh, work for you? And I think that wraps up the questions. Um, we really appreciate your input and we will take it into consideration as we're building the schedule. And at this time, I'm gonna pass the presentation back to Spencer. Thanks, Amy. Yes, so thank you all very much. Um, so we're, we're coming at you with a little bit of left brain, right brain stuff. So. Um, obviously, those perspectives are helpful for the committees informing the structure of the conference. And now we're shifting gears a little bit and asking you some, some more open-ended questions um, to help us make Open Ed 20 the best it can be. So we're going to get into those questions here. And the first question is kind of the magic wand question. And so I'll read it for you all. What does your dream virtual conference look like? We'd love your responses, whatever that means to you, on Menti. And as always, I encourage people to um, dream big when they dream. So nothing too ambitious. Let us know. All right, enlightened like that. Some people still thinking about what they would want to see. Um, interactivity, that's big in the virtual world, right, that we're living in uh, right now. Um, looks like kind of multimodal 
being able to attend live or also being able to reach into some archive sessions. Uh, personality, love that. And vitality, those are great words. Karaoke, very specific feedback there. <laughs> and uh, some sentiment around kind of the, the magic, so-called magic of an in-person conference, even though we may not be able to define that ourselves. I totally understand what you're, what you're saying there too. Um, there is kind of that magic to some interpersonal interaction that's face-to-face. -face, so that very human element of conferences, meaningful connections, social time, um, message boards, that's, that's a really good idea. Um, that I haven't seen at too many conferences yet. Not having to work, so kind of just getting some good download of, of knowledge perhaps from, from colleagues. I kind of enjoy that from time to time too, being a more of a, more of an introvert myself. Um, and I see more of these social elements, kind of entertainment, Global participation, I mean, that's a great point because that's something that's enabled by this type of conference. And I think something that we could really cultivate and take advantage of um, for, the, for the benefit of everybody. Different options. Seeing a suggestion for yoga popping up, that is, exciting and I've seen that at some conferences too so a lot more of the social elements hybrid again multimodal kind of approach to things and then avoiding overlap perhaps a good idea so that we can really take advantage of this time and this investment that we're making in this event Again, really emphasizing those shared experiences, some suggestions for a shared menu over lunch. I've seen some really cool, you know, coffee talk or book club type sessions at, at other conferences that are popping up. And this is looking good. So hopefully folks have gotten their thoughts in. We do have another question slated to come up. So keep rolling through these. I think you can hear my dog now scratching a hole in his bed. Got the puppies all over the place. All right, and so we're moving into the next question, which is a question that I'm really excited about. Um, what kind of sessions capture both your hearts and your mind, or your heart and your mind? And so whatever this prompt means to you, would love to hear your thoughts around this. All right, so now we're starting to see these coming through. Some inspirational speakers um, could capture our hearts and minds. How OER helps students and student voices. I think that's always something that we're excited about as educators is certainly the aspects of, you know, the student-centric approach and student-led approach to a lot of the work that we're doing, especially in open education. Um, See some others, some inspirational speaking it's popping up. New ideas. Lots of ideas around um, student advocacy and engagement. I think that's just so important. And so I, I really appreciate people putting students at the center of, of this conference and you know, at, at the work that we do, for sure. A 
addressing inequity in education, um, also a topic that is pertinent always to, to education and higher education. Cutting edge and unique ideas, innovative ideas, um, certainly captures the, the mind for sure. I love this comment, kind, curious, and together. Yes, very community oriented and I like that. And then some updates on the, the findings of OER's impact on students. Again, how is this work that we're doing influencing the student experience or informed by the student experience? Tangible takeaways or calls to action. Those are really important to me whenever I facilitate a session. Um, and so, yes, I appreciate those whenever I attend a session, most certainly. How about OER and open education's role in diversity and inclusion? Certainly, how can, how can we contribute to those ongoing conversations again? These are great. Thank you all so much. Inclusiveness, equity, diversity, and OER strength. How do we emphasize these? Fantastic. Thank you all for, for putting these out there. I know this question is kind of a, can be a personal question. So um, thanks for sharing your ideas. some more tying into kind of larger, um, for example, the SDGs, sustainable development goals, um, conversations again about inclusive or inequity in, in systems, inclusion, I should say, and then lots of feedback around students, which again, I think we all can agree with. <laughs> Great, so hopefully these couple of questions have gotten folks thinking about, um, you know, marinating on some of the other, the why questions about what we do and, and open ed with regard to the why. Um, I think we're gonna move forward into our next session. I'm sorry, next section. And that will be the breakout rooms, which are exciting, so, you know, just gather up all those thoughts you were having and kind of the content that we are seeing flash on the screen and you can be prepared to share those in the breakout groups. Um, just a couple of kind of framing points around the breakout groups. Introduce yourself quickly so we can make sure we make room for everybody um, in the group. And then a framing question that you all can start with if you haven't had um, more thoughts and ideas that were provoked by the previous two questions. How do you want attending open ed to benefit your learners, your students, or your community, and or your community, I should say. Um, so maybe think about that. You know, we go to these conferences for personal and professional development, the social connections, of course, the professional connections. Um, this question is a bit more oriented to, you know, kind of what you're bringing back. How will it benefit your learners, your students, and your community? And then just some ground rules around the breakout sessions as we have been holding them um, in the last few community calls. And I think we're gonna put those up on the screen the next slide. Thank you. Um, again, some ground rules. So we encourage you all you know, to make space for others, of course, make sure we can, those who want to contribute um, can and have the appropriate time and platform to do so. Um, listen actively, so when others are speaking, you know, really hear what they're saying um, and take time to clarify or repeat back anything that, uh, you know, is something that you'd like to engage in. And then, of course, uh, here's a golden rule for you in any meeting, help make others look brilliant. Um, let's, let's continue to build this good uh, goodwill in the communities that we have kind of bubbling up or around these, these calls and um, encourage others to speak up. 
and share their sentiments and their thoughts. So with that, I believe our groups are going to be um, facilitated by some of the committee members. And the committee members, if you all could, again, lead us through the kind of the prompt question, how do you want attending open ed to um, come back to your, your community? And then what we'll do after our breakout sessions is we'll return to the larger group and we'll have our facilitators maybe share one theme that has emerged um, from, from these conversations. And are we ready to Wonderful. break out the groups? Uh, yes, we should be. Awesome. All right. We'll be in them for about 15 minutes and then come back together. Oh, yay, they all look so good. Who else is, is on? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yay. Yeah, and I think, oh no, mine's backwards again. Oh, oh only for me. <laughs> yeah. oh I keep doing that too. I'm, I'm deleting this from the recording. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as people are coming back, uh, the, the discussion question is up on Mentimeter if you still have that open, if you wanna add any takeaways or anything uh, into the, the machine so it's recorded in writing, please feel free. Awesome, and Nicole, we're gonna have the facilitators. Should we start kind of going around with the facilitators to see what their kind of a one theme that emerged was? Sure, that sounds great. So it's uh, Emily, Lee, Akanksha, Amy, Haley. I believe were our facilitators. Awesome, Emily, do you wanna kick us off? Well, I think our biggest theme was connection, but we applied it in so many different ways. A call for connection in institutions to get OER out of silos, connection empowering graduate students to bridge the educator-learner divide, getting connections with funding agencies and helping connect people who have all sorts of different types of open projects they wanna do and getting people connected up with each other and how we wanna have effective connection experiences at the conference like the small groups allow us to do in Zoom. So that's that's our summary. Fantastic, I love it, connection. Um, Lee, how about your group? Sure, so um, I took several notes because everybody was a little bit more specific, but here's the, the general theme. So I'll give you guys more information on everybody's specifics, but um, largely our theme was um, rested on sustainability of the program and building more collaboration to educate and bring faculty and advocates on board to assist with this work and that this work um, slash conference um, had a way of filling people's spirit and inspiring others. So I thought that was really good. Beautiful, filling, filling your spirit and inspiring others. I love it. Um, Akanksha? Awesome. So my group was really talking a lot about how like other constituent groups or demographic groups can learn from each other so that we're able to take their language and bring it into our own advocacy. So how a librarian might be pitching OER to the librarian community versus faculty so that, you know, students going back in their advocacy and that the open sort of movement can move past the whole concept of just cause. But we also talked a little bit about those barriers of time and you know how people have to, you know, sometimes do unequal labor when it comes to open education. So equity was a big topic of ours too. So finding a way that we can integrate people into those sort of rooms and have these kind of conversations was a big topic of our conversation. Thanks, Akinsha. So learning from one another, I felt like that was like open education happening in that conversation almost <laughs> that you just described. So that's great. Um, and then was it Amy? Hi, yes. Yeah, so I think what Lee said was also was a really good summation of the, the conversation that our group had. And I'll just add to engagement problems. Um, and we also talked about um, diversity, um, equity, and inclusion. Fantastic. So kind of a few of the other themes that have been addressed, engagement, um, inclusion, equity. Love it. Um, and then Nicole, who was our last host? Haley. Haley. 
what do you <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So we had a really interesting discussion. Um, we talked about uh, what we really wanted to bring back from the conference was to equip people with tools to make OER, um, you know, a really understandable and recognizable field. Um, not only for the purposes of tenure and promotion, but also just for, you know, the, the scholarship of OER in general. Um, recognizing, you know, the service and the time and the commitment that a, a lot of faculty members put into this and developing this. Um, and then we came up with some really, really fascinating um, concrete steps that the conference can take to help attendees with this. So excited to share those uh, with the steering committee. That's fantastic. And I love the concrete recommendations that came out of such a short conversation. <laughs> so kudos to to your your group and all the other groups. I think that covers the breakout groups. If I'm not mistaken, did we get everybody? Did I miss anyone? Awesome. And you know, feel free to again respond to the prompt on your screen. I see some of the themes and some of the um, topics that were discussed kind of popping up here, but I think we're going to leave this open for a little bit. So if you want to add some more of your thoughts um if they weren't shared or reflected by the kind of very brief summaries please do so on the mentee yeah i see scholarship um and academic kind of recognition of open education popping up again sharing of ideas beyond the borders other dimensions more dynamic dimensions of oer beyond cost savings surely a, a trending topic and then this aspect of creating connections that emily mentioned to us creating networks having that support to not only um, support individual professionals, but to also kind of signal to the greater community, to a, a local community that the greater community um, is also engaged in, in this open education work. Awesome. Integrating open education into existing worker initiatives or priorities. Love that. That's something I'm always trying to do. <laughs> Advocacy came up in a number of conversations as well. So wonderful. Awesome. Well, with that, I know we have um, just a couple of minutes left. Um, so we want to thank you all so much for attending, sharing your thoughts um, and desires and sharing your, um, your thoughts to help us sculpt an appropriate agenda. I, for one, am very, very excited for the conference. Super stoked to see how things have evolved over the course of the last year or so, and um, just really excited to learn from colleagues. So those are my personal um, levels of excitement. And Amy, I don't know if you had anything else that you wanted to add while we close out this call. Just thank you, everybody, for your contributions. Um, we, we wouldn't be where we are today without them. And um, this has just been a really fulfilling and meaningful process for me. So thank you. Thank you, Amy. And just as a reminder, the, uh, the next meeting is October 16th, um, 1 p.m. Eastern. Thank you all again so much for joining us today. And we will see you in a month. And we will see you at the conference in less than two months. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.